So today we're talking about the healing power of questions. And I want to begin, if I can, with an exercise. So I'm going to ask you to do something, and I want you to really participate, okay? I want you to reflect for a moment on a question that you asked yourself this past week when you were facing either a decision or a challenge. Think of a question that may have been on your mind, and I want you to see every bit of the question. See it exactly how you were asking it. So just take a moment. Usually we have at least one burning question that preoccupies our thoughts, right? Okay, now, you have it clear in your mind? All right, now I want you to ask yourself, did the question help empower you or weaken you? How many felt that it empowered them what they asked? How many felt it weakened them? Okay, so... Most of the time, we ask questions that do nothing for us. Nothing. And in fact, I was telling Jeffrey that I woke up this morning at 2 in the morning thinking, I've got to rewrite this talk because I want to talk about the other half of this. Today, I'm just talking about the questions we ask ourselves. But I feel like next week, I want to talk about the questions we pose to other people because they're equally as dangerous. That isn't a reason for you to skip next week if I do part two, <laughs> by the way. But I want you to just think about the fact that we don't ask questions that add any value to our problems. And the question is why? Why do we ask questions that usually cannot help us? Why? Now, I want you to think of that very question. Those of you who said it did not empower you, I want you to think of what you could have asked yourself instead and how it may have helped you. And just reframe that question if you would. Now, we all interact with people every day. We face challenges, we make decisions. And during those times, we need our best self to be empowered, and it's not usually what comes out. I want you to think about these kinds of questions that create doubt and fear in us. Like, why is this happening to me? What did I do to deserve this? What message is the universe trying to send me? What am I going to do? Now let's play that out for a minute using my exercise, and I'll give you the answers that I think might come up for us. Why is this happening? Because life never seems to go my way. None of you have ever said that, right? <laughs> what did I do to deserve this? I'm simply not worthy of happiness and joy. What is the universe trying to tell me? That if there's a divine power, it's forgotten all about me. What am I going to do? I don't know. That's why I'm upset in the first place. So most of that questioning just perpetuates what's already going on for us, which is fear and doubt. In the, but none of those questions actually help us. But we could learn to ask better questions, set ourselves up for empowerment, and actually start to heal ourselves in every situation we face. Now, I talk a lot about The Untethered Soul, one of my favorite go-to books by Michael Singer. But he says that when something is bothering us, we should not be asking, what do I do about this? we should be asking ourselves what about this is being disturbed within me? 
what is being disturbed within me by this situation? And what can I do about what is being disturbed? So you're facing a decision. It's not the decision that's disturbing you. It's whatever's going on in you, whether that's past information, past programming, or plain fear. Neither one of those things are going to help us. Similarly, in her book, uh, The Gift of Our Compulsions, Mary O'Malley says that the questions that help us check in with ourselves during any situation are going to be the ones that take us out of being reactive. So that moment to say, hey, Nancy, what's going on here? What's really bothering you? It isn't what that person just said. What's going on? It's those questions, she said, that ha have us check in with ourselves, take us out of reactive mind, and take us into a more healing response. She says it's a multi-step process. First, it invites curiosity. Second, she said, it creates the space for us to actually calm ourselves and get a grip. Next, it brings us into the healing part of us being more compassionate and eventually into listening to our own inner wisdom, which already knows the answer to begin with. We all know what we're going to do, just not on the surface because we're too busy in that ego mind of ours trying to rectify things. Every question needs to be about what am I experiencing, not what is this about. It's what am I experiencing in my mind, in my heart, in my soul? Why am I nervous? Why am I sweating over this? What is that? If we find that and we fix that, we won't have the same problem the next time. But if we keep putting Band-Aids on everything, that we deal with, we are not ever going to grow spiritually. Now, women, I'm going to address you first, okay? Every female in this room has looked in the mirror and asked questions that did nothing to help them. <laughs> Does this outfit look good on me? What happened to my hair today? <laughs> Is that another wrinkle? Okay, what's really the issue when we do that stupid stuff to ourselves? What's really going on? It's our self-esteem. It's our lack of confidence. It's our need for some kind of approval from somebody outside of us. If we don't see ourselves in a positive way, who do you think is going to? The world just reflects back to us what we bring to it. So we have to be mindful of these questions. We need to say things like, don't I have great taste in fashion? Isn't today my best hair day yet? And maybe even, aren't I looking a little younger today? <laughs> this color's doing good stuff for me. Okay, what if we did that? What if we did that? And men, you're not off the hook. <laughs> so men, let's talk about the things you do when you're driving. <laughs> Questions like, does that driver think they can pull out in front of me and get away with it? <laughs> did you see what that person just did? Imagine how much more relaxed you would be if you ask questions like, I wonder if that driver is okay. Or something like, is there anything I can do to get out of their way and allow them the freedom to do what they need to do right now? What if we ask questions that didn't make us tighter, grip on the steering wheel 
while we're trying to figure out what somebody else is doing. And what about those times when all of us think someone is upset with us and we ask questions like, what did I do? Why are they upset with me? What if we were to ask things like, what if this is not about me? And how can I help that person who's upset right now? Think of how our week and our days would change if we changed that kind of rhetoric that goes on in our mind. Asking questions that make us doubt ourselves is definitely going to minimize and rob us of the joy and the happiness we deserve. And more importantly, it's going to prevent us from sharing our gifts with other people because we're constantly in that judging mode. One of my favorite Bible verses, and you know, there isn't a lot that I can say that this was the thing that really helped me, but this verse in Luke 11, um, verse 9 and 10, has been taped on my wall for over 10 years now. And here's what it says. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the doors will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Now, the reason I have that there is because every day, both in my corporate job and here, that helps me. It helps me to stay in a mode of thinking outside that place of, oh my gosh, or what am I going to do about this client, or how am I going to handle this situation? It puts me in that space of what am I seeking and what do I need to ask to get there? From my perspective, this message can work for us or against us. Because if we keep asking questions that don't support us, seek and ye shall find. So keep asking those questions that make you doubt yourself and question your life and your purpose, and you will get more of that because the universe reflects back to us what we put into it. That's how it works. And remember, there's no disclaimer on this verse that says this message only applies to good questions. So we have to be mindful about what we're putting out there. And while we often think the questions we ask boil down to whether we have our cup half empty or a cup half full, the real question I want to ask you is what is in your cup. Because we keep getting bumped and our cup keeps spilling over. Glennon Doyle, bless you, Glennon Doyle in the book Untamed said this. I'm going to read it to you. We are mugs filled to the brim. We keep getting bumped. If we're filled with coffee, coffee will spill out. If we're filled with tea, tea would spill out. Getting bumped is inevitable. If we want to change what spills out of us, we have to work to change what is inside of us. Now, there's another analogy that my sister sent that had part of that first one, but I liked hers and I put these together. And it says, we must ask ourselves, what's in my cup? When life gets tough, what spills over? Is it joy, gratitude, peace, and humility? Or is it anger, bitterness, and a victim mentality? You see, life provides us the cup, but we choose what to fill it with. And we need to be mindful that those questions come from what's in our cup. 
that, oh my God, what are we going to do feeling comes from the lack we already had in our cup and the lack of faith and belief that the universe will help us if we ask and if we open our minds to a solution that isn't one we created with our ego. See, our mind thinks that we always have to have all the answers to life. But the great thing if you're a spiritual person is you know you're not alone in this lifetime, that we all have that light within. And that light shines brightly when we allow it. But if we cover it up with all that negativity, the light can't get out. It's like the closet that has the light in the back and you keep shoving everything in there. How much light do you have when you pile it up? Somebody has that closet, I can tell. <laughs> what I want us to think about, truly, is that our job is to monitor how we serve ourselves. And if we can do that, if we can stop ourselves and ask the right questions, we can get to a place where we can ask questions that help us and heal our pain. What if the person that you're constantly thinking about doesn't like you, doesn't even think about you? What if? What if the thing you said on Friday at work that you've been worried about all weekend never crossed anybody else's mind? What if? you asked yourself a question that made you feel so good about yourself that the decision and the answer popped up in the next moment. It's a choice we have to make that decision for ourselves. So I want you to think this week about what you have in your cup and what is spilling out of it. Let's take a look at today's lessons. The healing power of questions can change our life if we are willing to do the following. Number one, pause and reflect before asking. Spiritual grounding clears the way. Number two, be your own champion. The universe will support your beliefs. Number three, seek answers that help versus derail you. The goal is to be empowered. And number four, remember, ask and you shall receive. Be careful what you ask for. Our affirmation I wrote for today is I am asking healing questions. Let's say that together. I, I am asking, asking healing, healing questions. questions. And our quote today is from Robert Rosen. It sells self-reflection entails asking yourself questions about your values, assessing your strengths and your failures, thinking about your perceptions and interactions with others, and imagining where you want to take your life in the future. Let's pause and take that in for a moment. So we take this moment now to acknowledge the power we have every day, in every moment, to ask questions that help us. To ask questions that make us feel better, not worse. To ask questions that open the door for our answers to come through, not open the door for fear and to ask questions that ultimately heal us from whatever our circumstances are so we can leave it in the rear view mirror and walk forward in divine light. And so it is. Amen. <laughs>